Hello, I am going to start in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 33, verse 1. This is Parsha Masse. It says, These are the journeys of the children of Israel, who went forth from the land of Egypt, according to their legions, under the hand of Moses. Now, in this week's Parsha Masse, it's giving us an overview, a recap of all of the journeys that the children of Israel had over a 40-year span. It's 42 encampments, 42 places that they stopped. And the Baal Shem Tov says that each and every individual, even today, can relate to these 42 stops, to, can relate to this journey. So, uh, what is God showing us here? We already seen through the Torah these stops, and yet God is showing us the journeys once again uh, combined together. And when we look at it deeper, it's really beautiful. God is showing us something in a journey. Are you on a journey in life? We're all on a journey. But it's not exactly the destination. It's how we handled our journey. How did we act in life? What did we do with our life? Did we do our best to seek for the truth? Did we really try to seek God? Or did we do our best to, for everybody? Did we love our neighbor? So, let's see here. It says, these are the journeys of the children of Israel who went forth from the land of Egypt. So, in Hebrew, the word Egypt is Mitzrayim. And it comes from the root word Mitzar, which means restriction, confined place. We've all been in a confined place. You might be in a confined place here today, but hopefully I can show you how to get out of prison. Because what is God showing us through these 42 journeys? He's showing us how much he loves us and I'm going to explain how he is as like a father to us in my Rashi commentary in the notes it says the Tankuma expounded on this for the 42 journeys what God is showing us it says this can be compared to a king whose son was ill and he took him to a distant place to cure him once they started back his father began to count all the journeys he said to his son here is where we slept and he said to his son here is where you were cold and he said to his son here is where you had a headache the Tonkuma goes on to say that at the end of the painful journey the king uh, recapitulated for his son all that he had gone through on his son's account to remind the son of how much he loves him so in the same way with these 42 journeys, God is reminding the children of Israel how much he loves them. And with that analogy, it is as if when he said, this is where we slept, this is when Israel was at peace. When you had a cold, this was when Israel felt like they were lacking something. When you had a headache, it was as if this was when Israel was in danger. We see through these 42 journeys that they went through trials and tribulations, plagues, storms, everything in life. But life is a test, and Hashem is testing us. It is like a, you know, He's there always still, even though we might not know it. Like when a father is teaching his son how to ride a bike, first time the kid fails, tries again, gets up, the father's helping him. The father gives him one last push. And the kid goes and he's cycling and then he forgets about his father. He's focusing ahead and he doesn't realize that he's left his father behind. But that doesn't mean that the father's not there. The father is still looking. The father still wants him to proceed and to keep going, to stay strong. The Shem is here with us. Now, there's 42 in Cam's. And as I said, we can relate to every one, but I'm just going to go into two of them which I just learned from my rabbi, um, Yeheskel. Uh, so the first, the very first encampment, the first one they came to was Ramses. What's amazing about the Hebrew is it's always showing us something deeper. As my rabbi says, every Hebrew letter is like advertising. Every letter counts. And so when I look at the, he uh, the Hebrew for Ramses, it is the Hebrew letters Resh, Ayan, uh, Mem, Samak, and Samak. 
And this has a numerical value. In Judaism, it's called gematria. And the word Ramses' gematria value is 430. That is also the same gematria value for nefesh, which just so happens to be the lowest aspect of the human soul. It's like, kind of like the animal soul, our animalistic nature. And also, Ra, Ramses, the word Ra in Ramses actually means evil. You know when Lady Gaga says, Ra, 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 that song. Evil, evil, evil. So we can say, see, just at looking at the deeper meaning of this word, it's not a good place. And we have all been in a hard place. We have all been in Egypt. Hashem wants to call you out of Egypt. So that's the first place. And then I'm just going to go all the way to the last encampment, the 42nd one. And what is it? It's chapter 33, verse 48. It says, They journeyed from the mountains of the passes and encamped in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. Now in Hebrew, this is the beautiful thing. Jericho, Yericho, uh, in that word you have the word reach which means smell. And we see in the Old Testament, the Tanakh rather, um, that uh, when we offer ourselves as a sacrifice spiritually and give up our desires, our offering, that is the best offering we can give to God. It is like a sweet smelling aroma to Hashem. And also in that word reach, we have another word, Ruach, which means spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, the sages say that uh, the spirit that hovered over the face of the waters was the spirit of the Mashiach, the spirit of the Messiah. So we see, through this whole journey, they started off in a rock and a hard place. They were in Egypt. And at this very end of the journey, they, were, they, were in, they started off in evil, and God kept bringing them and providing for them, kept calling them, giving them strength, along with Moses to support them. And they depended on Moses. And then we see at the end, they get to Jericho, and they reach the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. And Moses dies. And then it is Joshua who is to lead them into the promised land. And he did. Now Joshua means uh, Yeshua in Hebrew. And it means salvation. Now as I said before, they depended on Moses. Going back a little bit, one second. Uh, Numbers 21.5, it says, The people spoke against God and Moses. They believed in God and in Moses, his servant. Exodus 14.33 If they believed even in Moses, they certainly believed in God. But this comes to teach us that whoever believes in the shepherd of Israel, it is as though he believes in God. And in the same vein, it says, The people who spoke against God and Moses... But this comes to teach us that whoever speaks against the shepherd of Israel, it is as though he spoke against God. This is from the Mechilta Besalach Talmud Sanhedrin 110a. So we see also that the people always depended on somebody that God sent. Someone who is like a picture of the Messiah. And Joshua, Yeshua, Joshua, Yehoshua, sorry, was a picture of the Messiah. So I'm just going to take you to the Brit Chadashah now, in John chapter 22, verse 21. Yeshua says, Shalom Aleichem. Yeshua repeated, Just as the Father sent me, I myself am also sending you. Having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Ruach, there's that word, Receive the Ruach HaGodesh.
Ever since Adam sinned, God has been trying to bring us back to him. God blew his breath of life into Adam. He blew a piece of himself into Adam. And unfortunately, Adam fell into sin. And when he sinned, we all come from Adam. Our souls all come from one source. So when he sinned, it was as if his, our souls, his DNA exploded through the universe. But God wanted to bring us back to him. And throughout the whole Torah, we can see this beautiful, beautiful thing. And I hope that this touches you here today to know that Yeshua was the one who finally did it. But it's up to you to recognize this in your journey here today. Shabbat is drawing near. So I hope that uh, this blessed you. And if you are in a dark place, my friends, the God of Israel says, come. Come out of Egypt. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom and thank you.